All right, uh, let's see. I guess this is going to be part four of the Abomination of Desolation. Uh, we were speaking of the Feast of Weeks, which was uh, seven times, seven, seven, uh, seven, seven weeks, 49 days. And on the 50th day, it was Pentecost. So let's take a look at Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, this is the Acts of the Apostles, people. Okay? Uh, these were all believers. These were not unbelievers. These were believers and the, and, uh, and the Apostles. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Now that word wind in the Greek is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. It's where we get the word pneumatic, as in pneumatic tools, air tools, uh, people that work in, uh, if you've ever been to a tire shop, they use air tools. And that's where they get it from. And it comes, that's the word wind. But it's also where they get the word in the Greek for spirit, as in Holy Spirit. Okay? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Holy Spirit filled them. Now, this is not necessarily speaking about, I mean, of course it's talking about the apostles, but we're talking about other people. The apostles were given the power of miracles. I mean, Paul raised people from the dead. Peter, um, I forget who he was with, in the temple took a, a lame man and he was able to walk. I mean, you know, they had, the apostles had special powers from the Holy Spirit. But these are like the people that believed. And if you were in the room on the day of Pentecost, uh, observing the Lord's feasts or festivals or special days. God has a calendar. So does Satan. Satan's got a calendar too. It's called Halloween, Easter, Christmas. Uh, that's Satan's calendar. God's calendar is Passover, the Feast of Weeks, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, Tabernacles, Look it up. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it, they make, and the, the festivals of God kind of give an example of the, uh, how would you say, the way of salvation. I mean, Christ was sacrificed on Passover, and then on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, the, the Holy Spirit was given. And then, um, you know, take a look at it. I, it's, you know, I, that's not the, the study is not going to be on that, but I'm mentioning it. You can go and, and take a look at God's calendar is an example, a foreshadowing of the salvation of his people. It's really, it's, the Bible's just, there's so many doctrines that are woven into it I, you know, sometimes when I'm doing these Bible studies, I just don't know, sometimes I don't know exactly what direction to go in because there's so many things. So, you know, and I try to make points and, you know, so like I say, I'm just some guy that studied too much. All right, so verse three. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as, as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in their is in his own language. They weren't slithering on the floor, speaking gibberish that nobody could understand. And any of you that have been to a Pentecostal church that's done this knows what I'm talking about. No. They were speaking in languages. That's like me today being able to speak Russian or German or French when I've never studied it and I'm speaking fluently and people are able to understand me speaking about Jesus Christ in their language. That's what tongues was, not this gibberish garbage. I'm sorry if you think I'm being harsh on the Pentecostals, but I've been to Pentecostal churches. And, you know, uh, you know, when they could start speaking to people in their own language, something they've never studied before, I'll believe their tongues, but until then, eh. All right, because that every man heard them speak in his own language, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia. I mean, you know, they were speaking to them in their own language. So, there you go. But this was Pentecost. <clears throat> this was the Feast of Weeks. Now, the Feast of Weeks only happened, let's contrast back with Daniel 9. The Feast of Weeks only happened once a year. Passover was the beginning of, uh, was I think it was two weeks after the beginning of the year. It was right around the beginning of the year, the Hebrew calendar year. Uh, in Amer <clears throat> Excuse me. In America, January is the start of the new year, the dead of winter, right? But in God's calendar, it was the spring. Passover always falls around March and April, the beginning of the year. That's when you planted your agricultural items. That's when you planted your crops, okay? When winter is pretty much over, you plant your crops. That's when you're starting to do all this stuff. 49 to 50 days later, the feast, okay, it's uh, the feast of weeks was seven times a week, which was seven times seven, 49, and on the fifth day was Pentecost. Guess what? 50 days later, after you plant something, you're going to have a crop, approximately, if you have good weather and rain, okay? They were the take that and give thanks unto the Lord and do some kind of sacrifices, you know, you got to realize something. I was not trained as a Levitical priest, okay, and I don't understand the book of Leviticus perfectly. I've got an, a general idea and an overview, but, you know, I'm just not a trained Levitical priest. So that's how that works. But God's holy days, do a study on it. It's really, my opinion, it's very interesting. You know, uh, if turn the TV off. Spend uh, the time you spend wasting your time watching that filth and uh, do some studies. Read. You'll learn a lot. That's, that's, that's how I did it, you know. Uh, if it wasn't, you know, uh, first time I ever bought a TV... I didn't buy it because I wanted it. It's just uh, a buddy that I was hanging out with needed some money and offered to sell me a TV for 50 bucks. And it basically, I gave him the 50 bucks. He gave me the TV. I really didn't want it, but, you know, that's I was just basically doing him a favor because he was moving and leaving. And, uh, you know, 
but uh, that's that's the name of that tune. All right, let's go back to Daniel 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks. Now, I believe that this is talking about 70 years. Just like Jeremiah had said, 70 years would come upon the people that they were going to be in captivity. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon the, thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring into everlasting and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So, 70 years. I believe it was uh, 70 weeks is talking about 70 times, uh, 70 of the Feast of Weeks. I, I mean, I could be wrong. There could be people that understand this better than I do. Uh, to me, the book of Daniel is one of the most difficult books in the Bible. I, I just, I'm not qualified to do a commentary on the book of Daniel. I mean, I know it. I'm just, I'm just an amateur. That's all I am. You know what the difference between an amateur and a professional is? A professional gets paid. I'm an amateur. I don't get paid. That's, that's the difference. Just in case you didn't know that. So I'm just a volunteer. So you get what you pay for in this life, right? Remember that. All right. All right. In Jeremiah 25, 11, uh, you could read the book of Jeremiah. I'm just going to glance over a few things. Uh, Jeremiah through the Lord said, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations, nations of Israel, shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Uh, in Jeremiah 29.10, said, For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. Read Ezra and Nehemiah. And, you know. Uh, let's see. Jeremiah 25.10. 12. I'm sorry. 25.12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity in the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. And guess what? Uh, the, what was it? Um, when the king, I'm sorry, when Hussein tried to rebuild Babylon, he was deposed and destroyed. Babylon was told it would never be rebuilt. And yet you have, in Revelation, you have mystery Babylon which was the, I guess you could say, spiritual Babylon. So, all right, well, I'm going to close this out. This is going to be Abomination of Desolation Part 4. We're going to hit Daniel again. And uh, because Daniel gives you the explanation of what Jesus warned in Matthew 24 and what Paul warned in the book of Thessalonians. So let's take a look at that. And I'm going to close this out. This is going to be part abomination part four. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus who is the Christ in his precious name. Amen.